Whenever we talk about nuclear energy, uh, there's always the issue of waste. And I've invited uh, Dr. Bob Green. Pleasure, Michael. To come on and, uh, oh, we're creating something that's going to make a whole lot more nuclear waste? Uh, I want to step back a, for a second uh, and put us on a, a different foundation. Okay, and talk about waste for a second. Uh, we need to compare apples to apples. Okay, when you look at the fossil fuel waste, this is immense out here, and we never talk about it. Okay, and it's regularly, it's not really regulated as well either. As a matter of fact, you'll get more radiation coming out of coal than you will out of a nuclear plant. And I don't think people realize that. You mean all the nuclear plants we have in the United States is about 99. You it's take generating some radiation and some waste. No, no. Uh, no. Okay, they uh, don't, if you go around the plant with a Geiger counter, you'll get practically zero. You go to a coal plant, you'll get, an, uh, the Geiger counter will go crazy. So there's much more radiation right. in the coal industry, right. the coal and, processing. And here you've got methane coming out that is another greenhouse gas. Here you've got oil spills and, uh, you know, other environmental disasters, and we never factor those into the equation. So if we were to look at this problem that this stuff creates, it's right. probably like that, but we don't know about it. Right, but it's but much we, less with nuclear. Yeah. Okay, um, okay, nuclear, its energy density is so much higher. So you could take about a marble size uh, piece of uranium, and that would be enough energy for your entire life. Whereas over here, uh, with coal, you'd need probably a uh, 100, 100 ton train cars uh, yeah. to come close to it. Wow. Okay, so uh, the quantities are far different to start with. And, and what that means here, in terms of the amount of waste that we have from the electrical I industry, and that's another distinction we have to make. When we talk about nuclear waste, we're really talking about the power industry. Um, you know, we shouldn't be thinking medical waste. We shouldn't be thinking of uh, the nuclear weapons industry because that's really a separate industry. Compare apples to apples, please. Okay? Now, um, how much waste do we have here? Okay, what come, they have to replace the fuel rod uh, because uh, they expand and crack, and if they don't take them out early, then uh, they got bigger problems. So we only use maybe 5% of the fuel rod, uh, often less, okay? So most of what comes out of there is 95% potential fuel, okay? And we're wasting that. So one of the things we want to do is take advantage of that. Now, this type of reactor can be designed to burn down that sort of waste. Okay. Now, how much waste is this? It's a lot less than people think. If you took all the nuclear waste that was generated from the beginning of the industry, uh, you know, 50, 60 years, that's 70,000 tons, metric tons, that we have existing today. Uh, if you piled it up on a football field, it would run from end zone to end zone nine feet high. That's all it is, but you can't store it that way. So just let me go over that again. If you took all the nuclear waste just from that that was generated in the process of creating energy, and you had one football field, you could pile it all up nine feet. Right. Okay. Yeah, a little more than nine feet. Yeah. But if I included the n building bombs, uh, then, the, then we have, uh, it's a whole new... It's a whole uh, different industry. Uh, okay. Okay. So most people think of the nuclear waste as right. being included, but just So when you're thinking energy, energy, you should think energy. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so, what does this do? What can we do if we go to this sort of scenario? As, as uh, Alex pointed out, this circulates. Yes. And because it circulates, you can get a much better use, usage of the material. You can burn 100% of the material uh, in this scenario. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to reduce the quantity immensely, okay? And then oh. secondly, um, you still are going to have waste. You're going to have byproducts. Uh, some of which can be used for medical applications and others, but they're m much more benign. 83% of them are benign in 10 years. Uh, the others are on the order of three to 400 years, the other 17%. Versus what we have coming out with our current designs, 
uh, where we have to sequester some of the stuff for hundreds of thousands of years. So this is a huge win to go in this direction. Okay. Well, you have pretty much convinced me. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. uh, and so, Bob, so I want to... Can you sign the order now? <laughs> Bob, I want to say thank you okay. very much. And thank you, Michael. And uh, just stay okay. for a minute. And I just want to explain what this is up here. You know, there's about 99 plants nuclear plants, and they are producing clean energy. They are not contributing to the monster. And because they're not contributing to the monster and they are giving us energy, um, it's going to be recommended to the next president. We throw a lifesaver. We don't let states and other organizations shut down these plants because they are giving us the energy we are need, and they are not. So, I'm Michael Killen. I want to thank Bob Green, Alex Canara, Rapu Malhotra. Chip, uh, say. Mal Rapu Malhotra. Malhotra. That's what I was going to okay. say. <laughs> and Jeb Eddy. Yeah. And I'm Michael Killen, and uh, I hope this has been informative for you. And I thank everybody for helping here. Okay? You were very good. Okay.